It took forever to come up with that. <clears throat> and then when I do a solo podcast, we're talking about doing it. Uh, Tismanakis talks terrorism. Okay. Just distinguish the two. But this show actually has now gotten into a culinary podcast. We're doing the Bib Guans and the Michelins and all. And we have Georgia State University uh, Samo- Sommelier, Wine Sommelier, oh, man, that's as great. co-host. And we're going to get into coffee tourism. And then uh, we still haven't done international yet, but we're going to do, um, like, Anna's going to do Mexican restaurant in Spanish, and then uh, Hisu's going to do a Korean restaurant, of course, in Korean. We've got a person who can do German, a person who can do Greek. Can't find the Greek restaurants, our problem. Um, but we're going to break, break out into international. That's great. So, you ready? Oh, I thought we were already rolling. Well, we probably actually are. <laughs> you want to just keep talking instead of, like, doing a real start? Okay. I think that's good, yeah. Well, welcome, Jay. I am so excited to have you to our podcast. Well, thank you for having me. So you've been, we're going to get to this, but uh, you've been at Explore Georgia since the beginning of the year. January 2nd. January the 2nd. So let's talk about your background and how did you get here? Well, it's a bit of a long story. Um, yeah, I've heard some of it, and it's so exciting. We're going to branch out in all different areas on yes, this show. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and, and I'm very proud of that path. So um, grew up in Savannah, went to the University of Georgia, and, and fell in love with Athens in the early 90s. Can you believe I've never been to Athens yet? Oh, that's a must trip. years, still never made it. Must trip. Um, and... I think just the the energy, the culture there, the the uh, the arts vibe. Of course, the sports and the university, but um, and it's it's uh, it's just a great area of the state geographically as well. So fell in love with Athens. Um, ended up staying there 20 years. Not all undergrad, I promise. <laughs> and uh, and just really got in immersed in the music industry that's there. And you cannot, you know, throw a pebble without hitting a musician in that community or an artist. And so um, started playing as a hobby myself, guitar and singing and songwriting. Um, started meeting some bandmates, but uh, I was a marketing major. And that took me to uh, managing my own efforts uh, for performing. And that led to some local bands, Buffalo, New York, and some that I knew from the Savannah area and uh, other folks saying, well, we need help. We need business management um, to be professional musicians. So started down that road of um, managing some acts as a promoter, booking agent, you know, really just out of your apartment kind of job, um, out of the basement um, at the time. And uh, started being an agent for some local music venues. Um, there was the famous Allen's Hamburgers there in Normaltown, they call it, in, in Athens and in Clark County. And um, the Hi-Hat Music Club that started as a blues club uh, was looking for a new owner. And so uh, I went in with a, a co-owner and became an <laughs> a managing partner of a music venue wow. on Clayton Street in downtown Athens um, at the time, late 90s at this time, um, and managing bands along the way, uh, road managing. I think that also uh, getting out with the camera and behind the wheel of a van uh, across the country, Montana and back, Maine and back, um, running a music venue in a town like Athens as well as being on the road with uh, acts probably is where a lot of my love for travel and and the tourism side of things um, especially itinerary building right that was part of the the management so um, volunteering in the Athens Music and Arts Festival Athfest an award-winning summer festival every June uh, I was part of the planning committee well at the time it was housed under the umbrella of the Athens Downtown Development Authority and the Downtown Development Authority um, said, if you, Jay, like what we, what we do in our Main Street approach here of uh, production, promotion, economic restructuring for the health of a downtown, 
Um, we have a colleague that used to be in downtown Athens who is in downtown Gainesville, Georgia, and also managing some other towns, Lawrenceville, Georgia, for example. So after several, several years with the AthFest Planning Committee, I was interested, and they were doing parking studies and how just the mechanics of managing a vibrant downtown. And, of course, historic preservation plays a large part right, of that as right. well. And my first mentor, first real boss in this industry, was Joe Burnett, who was the downtown Main Street manager um, of Gainesville, Georgia, and who in the early 80s was sort of a guru in Georgia's Main Street program. Um, several cities were involved in that at the time, Rome, Georgia, and some others. But the Main Street methodology is really the four-point approach of, you know, an organized strategy, design, promotion, and then economic um, restructuring, economic development, business recruitment, um, facade grants, and the beautification process, and all of that. So Lawrenceville, seven years, seven years I was in Athens and commuting into the county seat of Gwinnett County with 15 plus municipalities, and Lawrenceville was just had that public private thing going on where they were revitalizing that core the urban core and around the historic courthouse of Gwinnett County um, which which had a lot of the wedding market yeah. com coming to the, the historic courthouse which a lot of our communities have that yeah the cater that's right facilities and so uh, learning sort of blowing that trumpet of concert series and product development and um, trails and tours and um, improving websites, right? And, and just getting that tourism engine going really on a downtown model, downtown development model. And so after seven years in Lawrenceville um, in a lot of business travel, uh, I was very interested in the mountains of Dahlonega because I had gone there every summer to Southeast yeah. Tourism Society's yep. um, marketing I annual marketing that. college. I miss going there. And um, what a great program, family, network of tourism professionals that, as you know, you can pick up the phone and call anywhere, anytime um, across the Southeast. So fell in love with Dahlonega and the mountains of Georgia and had the opportunity in 2011 to become the state, um, not the state, but the, excuse me, the Lumpkin County, um, Dahlonega Lumpkin County Tourism Director for the Chamber of Commerce there. So heavy leisure, yeah. heavy agritourism at the time. Uh, it was just so much fun learning how the wine industry, yes. the vineyards, the, um, the farm-based fun, whether it's the wedding industry in those vineyards, um, terrific winemakers because of the elevations in the Georgia mountains. It's very, very different than Virginia and in California and North Carolina and others. The Finger Lakes of New York. What do you think of our wine, our vineyard in Stonecrest? Uh, I'm not familiar with that yet. It's brand new, but we'll talk about that later. Yes, I'd love to, to learn more. Um, and I'm sure our team, we have a great regional team at the state, um, and you know Nyjah on our yes, team. I'm sure wonderful. she is familiar yep, with, with is. that. Um, so in Dahlonega and in Lumpkin County, um, all of that film yes. being, being camera ready, not just camera ready, but being film and friendly Hallmark. and all of the, yes. And, and the, the seasonal uh, holiday movies. And, and so all of the moving pieces of working with the local government there, um, being the second most visited state historic site in the gold museum there to Warm Springs for our state parks, um, getting to know the state parks folks through that role, um, just really fell in love with the mountains of Georgia. Because from Dahlonega and being there uh, with, with family and friends and, and also for, for work, um, research and development, traveling across the mountains. So um, and the start of the AT Trail. That's from right. The south. That's right. We're, uh, you know, it's an eight mile approach coming out of Amicalola. Uh, another wonderful state park, um, Amicalola Falls there, um, for that leg of Georgia. And Ella Jay, 
Blue Ridge, you know, all of the, the uh, even over on the more eastern um, Tacoa and Rabin County and Clayton and just the whole array of the mountain towns, which is such a, uh, a draw for visitors yes. now and, and for Georgians moving around the state, um, especially the Atlanta market coming yes. up Georgia 400, um, fell in love with the mountains and uh, four years there for some uh, personal reasons and family reasons to get closer to uh, in-laws and, and my parents in Savannah um, had an opportunity to join the team at the Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I realized that in my role of wearing many hats at a smaller chamber and tourism job in the mountains, um, that we were very much engaged in group travel and group business. Um, we may have 80 geologists that say we want to come to the mountains and study, um, you know, the that whole, well, historically gold vein up mm -hmm. there, right? And so uh, we would host them and guest services. And so when I came down as marketing and communications director for Augusta, that led me to really want to stay involved in group business as well and the guest services side. So I spent about a year and a half in marketing side of the house for Augusta and then a year and a half in group sales uh, as director of, of group sales. And that allowed me to meet a whole nother wonderful group of folks in Georgia tourism that live on the road that are selling Georgia at trade shows. Yes. I went to the RCMA, Religious Conference mm -hmm. Management Association in Chicago in the large McCormick Center and realized that there were eight Georgia partners on the trade floor. And I had not met these folks. I knew their marketing teams. I knew their CEOs. I knew, I knew their destinations, but I didn't know these uh, sales teams. Right. And so I was very excited about that. As a matter of fact, I, I believe I made us all do a group picture. <laughs> so I've always sort of worn the, the um, been the guy that wanted all the Georgia folks in the room to get a photo. Um, which is why I love the role that I'm in now with Explore Georgia in, in the State Department. But, um, but being in that role in Augusta, I, um, I just, I was serving on state boards. I was mm. serving on the Georgia Association of Convention and Visitors Bureau's board, GACVB. A lot of acronyms in our business, yes. as you know. We could talk uh, without, I think, saying a, a single <laughs> real right. word. And so... GACVB, I was serving as president of GACVB um, and, and was very honored to do so. And we were in the search for an executive director in 2018. And my love of this, the whole state of Georgia, I decided to put my name in the hat for that, for that position. Um, you're an awesome choice, too, I have to say. Well, thank you very much. I, I um, started there in April of 18, and just being that hub and connector of you and all of your peers and our colleagues across Georgia, you know, GACVB serves that advocacy role. Um, and there's certainly the government relations side, but just advocating for the industry in general. Right. Um, knowing that we have to educate not only uh, the local residents, but also the government officials about what we do, how we do it, um, the, the ongoing importance of the funding model, you know, with the accommodations tax, uh, protecting it for its intended use, um, all of those pieces, um, making sure that our partners in the visitor bureaus, uh, some may not have conventions, some might be smaller uh, departments, some may be a rural agritourism based organization, but all of those many, we had around 110 members, member organizations, uh, close to 600 individual members of GACVB. But for uh, five years, five and a half years, I loved that role. And it, and it took me a lot of places, even to, I spent some time with you in Washington, DC. Yep. 
um, doing the congressional effort because they are and so. And you were so nice to take it over for me. <laughs> well, there's so many uh, people need to re- understand the policies that can affect travel, and the and the Georgia delegation needed to hear from us. And and at the time, I I really enjoyed the um, the public lands issues, helping Georgia's <clears throat> public. Um, national park units right being 11 or 12 of those well but then all, you assisted all the time with the heritage yes national heritage area uh, legislation so yes and while they're they are not units they are certainly affiliates yes. of the national park service and with you having here arabia mountain um, arabia mountain being one of three in georgia the augusta canal heritage area was the first and then um and then of course a third technically being the um, National Corridor, Heritage Corridor, which is the Gullah Geechee Okay, corridor I wonder what the third one was. Along the coast that touches yeah. several states um, from Florida on up into the Carolinas. So um, just loved that, loved that education piece, right? And so we work to enhance our conferences. We work to enhance um, professional development through uh, several programs, leadership programming, things like that, and then even launching the luncheon that is happening here tomorrow. Yes. In in your community. Because your first one was what, in Savannah? First one was in Savannah, Um, and uh, and I'm very proud of that, and it sounds like there's a terrific turnout. I hear over 85 from every region of Georgia coming tomorrow to the Distillery of Modern Art. Yeah, we're very excited about that, and, and great speaker on film tourism. Yes, so that's tomorrow. Um, and Amanda Dyson, of course, Amanda yeah. Dyson Thornton, coming from the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau, the ACB. She's, she's wonderful, too. She was on the podcast, I think maybe within the two weeks she got started. She is just delightful. She, she has been a friend through Southeast Tourism. Yeah. And I was very surprised and very happy because I did not want to know who any of the candidates were <laughs> for, to uh, as my successor for GACVB. And she called and said she had been offered the position, and what did I think? And so I was very excited about that, and she is doing a great we job. We love that connection, just from my point of view. Sure. Where, you know, you were there, now you're at the state. Amanda was ACVB, and now she's at GACVB. And we love the fact, too, that she's right here in Tucker where she lives and her office is not very far away and just been a delightful uh, mix of, of you moving up and her moving in and been great for the state. Not to be selfish, it's been great for us. Well, thank you. Thank you. So with GACVB, I averaged about 1,400 miles a month traveling crisscrossing Georgia. Um, pretty much on par doing that still now. Um, probably averaging at least two, if not three, uh, being out and about, you know, days in Georgia, supporting our partners. and um, That, I think, was the big difference, not to stop you, but when you took over GACVB, the biggest thing I noticed, besides you were great for the job, is you were everywhere. I mean, if we asked you somewhere, you were here, you came for our uh, Roger Brooks meeting, and, and you actually were trying to tie us in together with other meetings you had. So I think that's what really was the big thing from my point of view when you took over GACVB and now that you're with Explore Georgia that you're out and about and that's that's the state needs that I know you're getting ready to do a trade sheriff circuit and we talked about that before the show started and you're going to be jumping into uh, going to uh, I, powwow I IPW, the old yes. name IPW, for it. IPW yeah. now and that's in LA so you're going to start the trade show circuit and all, but you're you're still you're out there and about in Georgia, and that's really hearing what all of us think and want. And I applaud you. That's a great thing. Well, thank you. Partner engagement is a, a major focus, of course, um, of Explore Georgia, and and we have a regional team. Nigel, so she's wonderful. Nigel is wonderful. We she have- is at every <laughs> signature event, every tourism partner event. You ask her, she's here. She's wonderful, too. Well, thank you. And, and, and the, the great thing is I've known this team for a long time. Right. And really, as GACVB, and, and when I was in the local destinations, I was able to, or I felt like at times I was almost an extended team member. 
right. because of the GACVB relationship where Explore Georgia serves as research and marketing focused um, as pillars. You know, GACVB was advocacy, education, professional development, being that resource, connecting the dots. So I had known this team at Explore Georgia for a long time. And of course, um, having Lori and Sarah Ann and Mandy as our other regional reps, um, it, it's just a great team. And we try to be, as, as the five of us try to um, uh, meet requests and, and help be that voice also for communities and destinations. And, and so, you know, that also takes me to my love of the visitor information centers. So, TV sets. So before, before I even had this uh, honor of uh, being a part of the team managing the centers, um, I used to stop all the time. I used to do that all the it, time, it, too. It, it, all this, in my other roles. And even got to work when I was in Dahlonega, for example, get behind the counter, um, the desk there in Livonia at that state center, um, and, and have it at a few others just to listen to the, mm -hmm. the traveling public and some of their questions. And, and so now we have the nine, the nine visitor centers that, that outlined the state. And I am on a listening tour of those now and, and yeah. learning all the, all the moving pieces. Um, obviously, they are Department of Transportation owned properties that we manage the information side. And, and you will not find a more dedicated team than those managers and their information specialists. You remember Mr. Cromer, who used to work for us? Oh, man, he literally believed the Welcome Centers were the most important thing in all of our marketing if we shifted if i would have shifted our entire budget to the welcome centers he would have thought i was a genius because he was down there we have those zans outside because he would be down there all the time that's how we got like tvs and all the welcome centers back then and brochures were all just designed for the welcome centers i still love welcome centers but he was like the only thing that's important was welcome centers and georgia my mind days well and you know they are the front line yeah, that's true. So their first impression, they have to be on all the time. Yep. And they have to deal with, as you can imagine, millions of folks that have been in their car a long time, right? Oh, yeah. So um, they are, if you ask any of them what they love about their role in promoting this state of Georgia, they just love helping people. And it keeps them going, getting up every day, and going and being the reinforcement of the marketing. So... You know, we've heard of other models. You can spend all the, the money, but if they are not greeted with that hus hospitality that very we're known so. for, right? So we, um, we're very proud of that team. Uh, they are an award-winning team as well. And, and connected to all of the, as you know, there are, I forget how many now. Um, it has to be close to 100 um, local or regional visitor centers as well. We're still working so, on getting you one for us. So we have the, the local welcome centers interacting with the state centers and then our regional team and all of that is a support structure yeah. to the marketing strategies and the investment because mm -hmm. we are certainly making the investment um, in keeping that economic engine going. I mean, we're, you know, we're a 73 billion capital B total economic engine right now for the state wow. of Georgia. Um, and you've been around. You remember the numbers and the, the, the days. We always have to make sure that our partners in, in uh, local governments understand that that is reinvesting that traveler guest tax yes. dollar. Um, it, when travel's going well, the economy's going well for Georgia. Everybody's going well, doing well. And we also have, um, you know, we, we – People are at their best when they travel, mm -hmm. right? It, they're having fun. And so whether it's business, all the different markets, um, the word tourism is an interesting, you know, the visitor economy, the visitor markets, yeah. uh, an important way to look at that because there's so many different market segments of who is traveling. Yes. Um, that's important to understand um, business and, and all the various groups. Now, whether it's association business and the – smurf markets the social military education religious fraternal um acronym yeah. um family reunion market you know we see communities that have a, a lot of family reunion business 
but then ultimately it's very important and I'm getting into the research I should leave that to Dr. Ashley Barfield on our team um, who is the expert and does an incredible job of helping us with the research behind our strategies but <clears throat> the visiting friends and relatives the VFR yes. market is such a major piece of uh, who the visitor is and and that can be so many things that can be just that multi-generational travel or it can be um, educational based medical tourism could be all sorts of things so an interesting thing about the vfr is most people think they always stay at home even if they do stay at the home they're still spending money but everybody doesn't always stay at home they stay in hotels as well so then you get a big bang either way so if they're staying in hotels they're still eating out they're still doing things and if they're staying at your house you're not going to feed them all your meals inside your house so you're still going to go out and eat you're still going to go out and see the attractions and go shopping and all that so it's it's just a win-win market for us well and in, in speaking of visiting friends and relatives i'm personally getting a real education in little league sports oh yeah so at work when we talk about the sports market and everybody has some sort of the the majority of communities in georgia uh, whether it's through their parks and recreation and having little league tournaments all the way up to the big things, right? So we FIFA World Cup is coming right. to impact Atlanta and at Metro Atlanta. And so uh, everything in between from the pickleball craze now to uh, in, in investments in those facilities yes. to the, um, the Georgia Sports Inc. is a great group and association here yes. in, in Georgia. Um, several sports commissions, sports councils, convention and visitors bureaus that serve that purpose, uh, working in that arena of recruitment and tournament recruitment events, sports events. Um, and we're very proud that that's one of our new enhancing Georgia tourism is through the sports market. Uh, we've last year made an investment um, in the Huddle Up yes, group yes. offerings, um, which is a mechanism. Um, uh, they were able to help us with a mechanism for assessment assessing your facilities uh, for potential to host and then also a sort of matchmaking lead program to try to to uh, recruit tournaments so we're excited to assist that group and um, all of all of this reminds me of the fact that we have our budget and we're doing our work but we can't make any of this happen without those partnerships and collaborating I mean we we set the strategy but we have to do it with partners, implement it with partners, you know, get get those things executed by using our local great partners like you and your your colleagues. So and then, of course, measuring the outcomes again, Dr. Barfield and, and her team do a great job of that, letting us know how that's going, um, the return on investment. And um, and so I'm excited. We're already having talks about the, of course, 25 uh, and beyond. Um, and then speaking of uh, being sort of in that sports hub area, um, we are hosting the 2024 September uh, Governor's Tourism Conference this yes. year um, in the, uh, the new Hotel Signia. Um, and really excited about that. You know, it was Jekyll Island last year. Right. But for, uh, for the Governor's Conference, you've been to several. You've been a host of the Governor's Conference. I remember yours very well. Yes. And um, in the programming, the meetings, the content is all coming together now. So we're very excited. The signia is going to be amazing. It I, is I, going I, to be great. I think I'm going to wait till going to that conference to see it. It's just and, and see it in action. Okay? Yeah, see it in action. Now, well, talking about uh, you were talking about the numbers and economic development and all. So I know you track all the counties. So tell us about our home, the cab. What's our numbers? Well, um, and if I may, I shared the seventy-three billion industry. Yes. You know, also, we, as we talk tourism in 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 DeKalb as well, but as we talk tourism statewide, we are supporting four hundred and twenty-two thousand six hundred jobs. Wow, that's amazing. Collectively, you know, as an industry, um, have a, a fun thing to share that you know that is enough to buy over five hundred Delta seven thirty-seven planes. 500 planes. Wow. The $73 billion impact and employ 
um, nearly every resident in the city of Atlanta. So love to share that because, and this is 2022, these numbers. In uh, 2023, we usually release at the Governor's Tourism Conference, coming up for the, the previous year's numbers. Um, but we had a record 167.7 million visitors in 2022 um, that spent nearly 40 billion direct spend in Georgia. The 73, of course, is the direct, indirect, and induced spending uh, combined for our statewide numbers. So yes, I'm very excited to share with you that your DeKalb County uh, numbers for 2022 um, saw 1.4 billion in direct spending, which supported 11,700 jobs. So that's still amazing. People need to hear that more. We need to tell that story more from our own. And, and I will say, while we, these sources are, we use uh, several industry companies, um, you know, Tourism Economics being an Oxford Economics company and, and, and other uh, sources, but I think sometimes you and your uh, local partners and, and folks in economic development may even say that these are conservative numbers. But 11,700 jobs and uh, that generated, and this is the really important number that we use, as you know, for our local residents to understand, um, generated nearly $113 million in state and local tax revenues, you know, which lessens the burden right. that you would have to pay as a local resident without, without these visitors. Uh, so many times we see local residents that want to address traffic or visitors and, and they see those out-of-state tags or those out-of-county tags and, and it's important to educate them as you and your team um, that that's clean, new yes. cash coming into that community. Uh, and it is about the cleanest industry, if not the cleanest industry, is yeah. that, that short-term and long-term uh, cash coming in and uh, you know, it's hard to measure the value of a repeat visitor. And when they fall in love with your assets, meaning your attractions, your product, uh, to measure their visits over their lifetime and their word of mouth uh, to visiting friends and relatives, or they may impact helping you recruit a convention here. Yep. Um, that visitor experience that, as we said, might even start at a, a welcome center, a state visitor center, um, all the way down to to us delivering uh, that brand promise um, and that hospitality, y you just can't measure it over the lifetime of the impact. And so uh, it's just such a fun – It travel is all around us, and that's why it's – it's we could we could do an uh, all-day podcast. Yeah, definitely. We know something like you were talking about where they – some of the locals complain about the out of county or out of state, but we now have a program called Placer AI. I know you're familiar with it. And we're going to start, we're starting to run it in all the big events because a lot of times these, the cities close up Main Street, close up downtown, and everybody complains. The restaurants complain, the retail complains. Now it's so cool we can run the Placer AI program over these events. And like one event in Chambly, it showed how many people went to multiple restaurants before the event, after the event. And it showed like antique store, how many people it came to the antique store. Because I know a lot of times they say, well, I'm just going to close up because you've got, the, you've got the street closed. Well, now we can actually go in and show why you don't want to close up. You don't want to complain about a little inconvenience when you're actually having more people that's spending money or seeing your place to come back and spend money. So it exactly it correlates to the even the locals sometimes complain about their own event bringing themselves out. So it, it is very cool how now we can start addressing that to where okay you're you're having a better experience because they are coming out. Yes, there are a number of service partners that have some terrific tools for for measuring return and tracking and um, I will say and I know at the state we we use arrivalist as well yes 
Um, but I will say that we can measure those tax receipts, but it is hard to measure the eyeballs in, oh, the, yeah. in the windshield survey that, totally. that people are making. And it's why we tie in nicely to, uh, as tourism professionals at the local level, to that curb appeal and gateway signage and public art and the you know, economic developers will say that that cultural piece helps close deals, helps in business recruitment and people bringing their companies and bringing relocating families and things like that. So um, while it's, again, cash registered ringing, we do want heads in beds, of course, but capital T tourism being that, that economic engine I loved how you said capital T because I constantly in class will say capital H for hospitality, big, not just hotel. Yeah. And then I will say capital T is tourism because my way of looking at it is tourism is the top and hospitality is all the different components as well under tourism. You Now you can flip it to capital H being hospitality, not hotel, but... You know, I loved how you said capital T for tourism because I consider travel and tourism going together and hospitality going together with tourism. Yes. So it doesn't really matter, big H or big T. They're, <laughs> right, they're right. saying the same thing. It just That's right. <clears throat> as long as we get everybody to know what in the world we're talking about. That's right. Those are great numbers. I mean, I appreciate you sharing them and, and you all doing all this and, and providing, like, we're part of Rivalist as well. So we're part of Huddle, Huddle Up, Huddle Up, Huddle right. group. Huddle up group. Yeah, so we're part of all that through the state, and and uh, you just do a great job on and bringing things to us to be able to partner together. So we appreciate all of that. Well, thank you. Yeah, another another area that we um, are excited about is the U.S. Civil Rights Trail. Yes, and there's so much potential there. Of course, we have several. Um, destinations and attractions, um, points of interest uh, already uh, represented there at the U.S. Civil Rights Trail. But we have had some recent meetings, and, and Deja Pruitt on our team serves on that board uh, for Explore Georgia and represents us there that uh, with our regional team, we have identified several other candidates and folks that we would love to see put in applications for uh, elevating our presence there on the Civil Rights Trail. So there's, I mean, as you know, um, civil rights history is all history, American history, Georgia history. I mean, it's, right. we, 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 uh, we have a lot of uh, potential there to grow that presence. I'll give you an interesting story about that. We had, I think we were talking before the show, we had an international artist come in to do two different murals, one in downtown Shambly, one in downtown Clarkston but while he was here we're looking about bringing him back but we understand one he thought that this era is magical I think that's very cool but tying into the civil rights so he's from Tanzania Dubai he travels the world he is now very interested in the civil rights trail so we're right. going to look at trying to bring him back because I'm not sure if he didn't know much about it I don't know the time but when he got here he became kind of very mesmerized by that history and so we're going to look at trying to get him somewhere to do a mural dealing with the civil rights trail of georgia oh, that's so great that's just the person who was here for one week that just got into the history of shambly he actually got a writer who uh, lives in in north georgia north atlanta area who wrote a book she's a new york times bestseller so he used a quote from her and he put it in english and arabic then he used another author from the Shambly area who's passed away many years ago for Clarkston, but we already know he wants to come back and do something civil rights related. So that's pretty oh, cool. Oh, that's great. We need to know about that. Let's stay in touch about yeah, that. Yeah, because I'm trying to bring him in, I think, later in October area to do another uh, signature series on culture. Great. But And he was on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and he actually opened up my mind. He didn't know he was doing it, but... He started talking about how arts and peace and culture and all how arts can help that with the cultural aspect. And, and his is very diverse because it was Arabic, English, um, local writer. Um, some kids have their name on of the owner. Their name is in the artwork. And 
all these different pieces that come together. So we'll let you know. That's great. N- we'll, Nigel definitely needs to know about that, too. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, excited to hear more, learn more about that. We're looking at doing Guatemala maybe next year. Okay. Which I didn't realize that the, the largest minority population in Chambly is from Guatemala. I really like the challenge when, when we get asked about favorite places in Georgia. Yeah, what is your favorite place in Georgia? Right. So I love that challenge because while I have salt water in my veins being born and raised in Savannah, um, and, and there's something about the coast, and I mentioned my years in Athens and working in the mountains, so I'm not just giving you that Chamber of Commerce-style answer um, of supporting everyone. I really mean it. This is a sincere the question really has to be for me personally and in my role, what is my favorite currently or now or this week or right. that, you, that you've seen recently? Right. Because while going over that Sydney linear bridge to Jekyll Island, um, there's something special about that place. However, right now, if you haven't been to Columbus, Georgia recently, you need to go to Columbus, Georgia. And so every corner of, you know, the, the, the developments in Macon, um, I know a lot of times we folks say mountains to the coast, but, you know, the Piedmont, the river regions, um, it's just whether you're shopping for retail in Thomasville, Georgia, which is such a wonderful sort of oasis down there in South Georgia, um, or at a lodge in Lake Park down by Valdosta for a special event, um, I've just been blessed to get to see all of these places and the people operating these places and a lot of times it's natural resources so you know there's of course there's the management there but um but i always like to talk about that because i get asked that a lot and in doing those day trips around the mountains when i lived up there um or just the sort of hub and spoke that we also try to get visitors to stay and spend longer with that model Um, regionalism is a very big part of getting partners to work together because visitors do not see county lines, city lines, state lines. So they want to have a good time and we want them to come back and spend more money. So, um, I do not have a favorite place in Georgia and that is a true answer. As you were talking, my original for the first eight to ten years of me being here our favorite place was Jekyll you know we still love Jekyll but just I guess we've been there two to three times per year sure so now we go we try to go to the mountains every year but no set place but I'm going to ask you what is the biggest attraction in Macon and it's not going to be probably what you think it is you know the answer. Is that why you're asking me? Yes, it's my personal opinion of what the biggest attraction is. Your personal maybe. opinion of the yes. biggest attraction. Okay. I think sci fi. Sci fi. Okay. So, my itinerary, for example, for a Macon, Georgia experience, it does involve the Okmulgee Mounds, right? right. Which we're very excited about True. The, working towards um, national park status there. Um, I am, again, you heard earlier, my music True. interests. True, So the Big House, Allman Brothers, that, and, and, and that's another reason why we've engaged them in international because of Otis Redding and you know, Little Richard and that music heritage that's there um, has huge international appeal still. Um, but I am not familiar with the site. Well, now, now there is me. a great science museum that's in Macon. It. That's not it. I've been there. You've got me now on three different things to bring up. The only thing was that w- that my wife was going to get off the interstate for, except to have a, a quick meal, was the Doctor Who TARDIS little library. There's a full size TARDIS. If you remember Doctor Who at all. Okay, I'm, I'm but I'm not familiar with this library. Yeah, there's a blue police box, full size, little library in Macon, it's just out in somebody's home or neighborhood. And my wife actually, we got off the road, went to this thing, and got our picture taken with the TARDIS. Biggest attraction in Macon. Oh, you pull it out? There it is. There you go. 
full size Doctor Who police box with a little library inside. That's the number one attraction in making in my mind. So why it's impossible to have a favorite place in Georgia? 159 counties, 536 cities, I believe, uh, according to the Department of Community Affairs. Yeah. Um, and that's why there's so many yeah. unique attractions, nooks across Georgia. Um, I love th- to have things attractions to see. Like that. Yeah. That is terrific. And this is why I also learn something every day on the job. Every day. I didn't day realize about we have Georgia. like the world's largest um, traffic. Uh, you know, those. Um, what are they called? Traffic, um, not the cones, but like they stand up to direct to warn you of traffic. I think we have like the world's largest. I still haven't seen it. I need to go out and see it. But Stephanie Stuckey showed up, uh, talked about this gigantic traffic thing in Tucker, and they're like we have that. So, um, so we have two more things discussed. One, did you realize, or do you know? You probably do that Leonard Skinner's first album was uh, recorded in Norville, the Freebird album. I recently learned that, thanks to the folks in Macon, actually Rock Candy Tours uh, there does terrific history of all of that, the music tied to Macon. And I, I saw that recently on a post, yes. Well, we learned about it in one of the podcasts that we had. And so now we've, we've got that on some uh, uh, reels. Of course, uh, um, Atlanta Rhythm Section, of course, uh, recorded out of Doraville since they were from Doraville. Well, a lot of first best onlys in our state. Yes. So, Jay, if uh, someone needs to talk with you or wants to know more about Explore Georgia and your activities, how can they find you? So, for more information and for getting in contact with our team, um, exploregeorgia.org, as well as georgia.org. Well, Jay, I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you for Welcome having you me. back anytime. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Oh, it was a pleasure. This is on. such a cool program that you do here. Well, I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. And I learned Likewise. a lot about you. I didn't know the singing part as much, and then I definitely didn't know the music part for so many years from Athens. So that's very cool to know. Well, maybe next visit we'll I'll have a guitar with me and we can do a little taste. I look forward to that. Great. Thank you. And thank you all for listening and watching. Please stay tuned to our next podcast.